Hey everyone, how's it going? So I've been continuing looking at how I can kind of speed up the rendering of a table in React with like 3000 elements. And that kind of led me down a path of like learning more about browser performance and how the browser is doing stuff. So I wanted to share what I learned. Again, I'm not an expert at this stuff. I feel like I've been coding for so long and I've never even opened up this performance tab much, mainly because most of these frameworks you use are pretty quick. So you don't really need to like know like what's going wrong when stuff is slow. Because as long as you're not displaying a ton of items, it's usually pretty fast, right? Um, but in this case, I need to figure out like why is this kind of slow. So let me just show you what I'm, I have. I can't speak today. Let me show you what I have. I have a table. You click on name, and it basically sorts the table, right? Pretty straightforward. At least I thought it would be. I, I have a syntax error. <laughs> let me go ahead and get rid of that. In fact, let me just reduce this a little bit because. I'm screen recording and I don't want to use up all my CPU. All right, so here we have, we got a table, you click on name, it sorts it by, it just reverses it, honestly. So I wanted to share with you like what I've been kind of looking into. Um, so when you have a bunch of records like this, the browser has to do a lot of extra work, right? So let me kind of break you down this performance thing. And I'll, first of all, let me show you how to do this. So if I clear this out by clicking this clear button and I click on this record button, click on name, and go ahead and click on the record button again, you get a profile that kind of explains all the performance of that, you know, point in time, right? So you can use this breakdown to understand like where is stuff taking a long time to do stuff. So about half a second is spent from the JavaScript. So that includes any code that you wrote, any React code, etc. A lot of this is probably from React trying to actually run through the DOM elements, sort them, do reconciliation, re-update them, et cetera, with the virtual DOM. I'm not a React expert. I don't know how it works under the hood. I just know that you can kind of run through this. You see that's a click event when I clicked on name and you can kind of figure out what it did, what functions was it calling. And this took about hundred milliseconds, which is pretty slow. And then it recalculates the styles, <clears throat> which I guess you can, I'm guessing is this, when it switches from the minus to the plus or plus to the minus. And then it's calling another function, which is actually reversing the array, which says it takes 290 milliseconds, which is again, pretty slow. And then it recalculates the styles, recalculates the layout. All right, so overall this whole, this whole process, um, it's about a, you know 477 with scripting and 809 in rendering. So if you understand like how to break stuff down, you can kind of optimize how your page is working. And let me show you some stuff that I had to kind of do to like speed this up. I'm still trying to learn like what I can potentially do. So this blue part, this is stuff that the browser is doing. You don't really have too much control over this other than you can change the way you're doing styling on your component so that it doesn't have to do so much reflow. So there's this idea of like doing the um, styling and the layout. Let me, let me hover over here. So yeah, recalculating style is this block here. And then there's a block for layout. So basically recalculating style is going to run through your components and figure out if the styling needs to change and it, you know, does that calculations. And then layout is basically determining the geometric locations of all the DOM elements. So if you were to, for example, have this button shift the table over layout is going to be a lot larger. So this is 351 right now. And I have this, this header kind of fixed. You notice that the table doesn't move at all when I click the button. But if I were to go back to this table here and get rid of the width that I think I have hard coded. So here I have a styling width of hundred pixels. If I delete that and save this, let me kind of show you what happens because when the minus turns into a plus or vice versa, you notice that the entire table shifts a little bit. All right. So now what we can do is let's zoom on in this new performance uh, profile and notice that render rendering actually went up to eight. 80. I don't remember what it was before, but it definitely wasn't 880. I think it was something lower. Um, and the shifting, the layout is about 349. So let's, let's go back and try this again and see like what happens. So if you also notice here, layout here is 211 and 349. So let me just write that down 211 and 349. And that is without fixed width. So we're doing this the getaway and let me go back to the old approach because I'm dumb and I didn't actually like write it down. Should have done that. So let's save this fixed width of 100. And let's see how it affects the layout. There's also styling, 139. Uh, 
in 93. I'm going to write these all down. 139. <clears throat> and this is just going to be an order, so I can kind of refer back to it. So now when I click on this stuff, let's just go ahead and record a profile again. And click name column. I should flip it back. Let's zoom in a little bit. Now let's break this down. Notice here the layout for this was 13 milliseconds, right? So the, the idea of shifting this thing, this, this column being fixed width, it went from, I believe I wrote down 139 milliseconds to redo the layout. Or actually it went from 139 milliseconds for the styling to 89. And then for the layout, it went from 211 to 13 milliseconds, right? So there's a huge performance gain from just not having to shift this whole table over. And obviously this is a big issue for larger tables with 100 records. If you have a smaller table, it might not be an issue. But the more elements you have on the page, the more the browser has to work to recompute where everything needs to be shifted over, etc. And then also, if you look at over here, we got 256 and 376. So let's see if that changed at all, 256 and 376. But the recalculating of the styles, that went from 93, and that went up to 256. So I, again, I don't know if overall we even gained performance or we lost performance, because this went from 802, right, 802, I don't think I wrote that down. Let me go back and... Also, you might have to do this multiple times like to get an accurate average because depending on your CPU usage on your machine, like, you know, the browser might not be allocated to do a lot of rendering and stuff. So let's just go ahead and try to run this again and figure out what's going on. So rendering was about the same time and the scripting was... Yeah, so I don't know if we even made any performance gains with this because this was 878. Yeah, so it's a little bit faster. <laughs> but... I guess overall, like you don't get as much shifting. I guess what I'm trying to show you is that like depending on your components and how much the page is shifting around, it's going to take longer for stuff to happen, especially when you have a lot more DOM elements on the page. So it's, I kind of just been learning more about the profiler and understanding how this stuff works. You can also kind of dive into the function calls. Like if I were to look at, um, I don't know, this function call, I can dive into it and see like what exactly it called and where. You get kind of like the call stack if I wanted to. I guess you can do it here too. So, but yeah, I guess it's, oh, you can also go down here and it tells you like how long it took, like your GPU to do some stuff, uh, how long it took the raster. I don't really know what this stuff is, honestly. I need to like read more about performance and stuff, but overall, I just wanted to kind of share with you what I've been working on and just what I've been learning. Hopefully it helps you learn a little bit as, as well. You can also hover over, you got screenshots and it shows you like, what did the page look like at this point in time? Um, and like, you know, how much CPU was it using in that point in time? So it's really good to understand this if you really want to squeeze out as much performance of your UI as possible. But for the most part, like if you're using a React or Vue or Svelte, you don't have to worry much about this because it should be pretty performant. But yeah, that's all I want to share. Have a good day and happy coding.